Gotti. <laughs> Earth is out. You know what I'm saying? We back with it. What if a supernova hits Earth? If I remember, didn't something, a supernova recently was a topic? You feel me? I feel like I've heard that recently, bro. I, I don't know. I forget. But you already know what it is. Let's get it, bro. Supernovae are the most powerful explosions in the Let's universe, unleashing enough energy to outshine galaxies. Which one y'all want this? We have no real metaphor for their power. Let me know. If the sun were to magically go supernova, it would feel like you were being hit by the energy of a nuclear explosion every second for weeks. For weeks. While supernovae are the engines of creation, forging the elements that enable life, they also burn sterile whole regions of galaxies. For weeks is crazy. So what would happen if one hit Earth? For weeks, bro. They really take that long? There are, roughly speaking, two ways to make a supernova. Either the core of a massive star implodes, or, less common, a white dwarf gains mass to the point where it ignites explosive nuclear fusion. The outcome is the same, a supernova explosion. When we think of an explosion on Earth, we think of something that happens fast and ends. But a supernova is more like a volcanic eruption followed by a tsunami. At first, there's a colorful yes. ball of hot, expanding gas, creating a... Wait, 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 you, you, you day 16 right now, boy. This shit really lasts like that, bro? Spectacular cloud that will shine for about a month. But then, it doesn't stop. Oh. Hot and dangerous gas rushes outwards at speeds of 10,000 kilometers a second through the near vacuum of space, sweeping oh. up the sparse gas of the galaxy. This wall of gas expands for tens of thousands of years and will eventually span up to dozens of light years until it finally cools off and disperses its substance back into the galaxy. Bruh. So what if this star tsunami hits us? Well, the damage depends on... I mean, look at the fucking... Obviously, this is not to scale or whatever, but like, look at this compared to this. We're fact. How far away it is. Stage one, thousands of light years away. Humans have witnessed dozens of supernovae, but all of them were thousands of light years away. They appeared as new stars, some outshining the moon, twinkling for a few weeks and disappearing. Aside from looking very the pretty at this side. distance, they don't do much to us. Stage two, 300 light years away. Things begin to get a bit icky once a supernova occurs around 300 light years away. We can expect one this close to us every few million years. A single star giving the night sky an eerie glow like twilight. And while this is far enough away and dim enough to not do harm to us, they can affect the Earth. Yeah. At these distances, it's like being hit by the last weak waves of the star tsunami. Not strong enough to do real damage, but still noticeable. Yeah, In fact, we know that over the past 10 million years, multiple supernovae have struck Earth from these distances because we can find radioactive isotopes of iron deep in the rocks and sediments at the bottom of the ocean. Amazingly, these supernovae around the solar system have cleared a 1,000 light year wide pocket of space that's called the local bubble. They blew away the interstellar gas and dust, creating a lumpy wall of gas that's now a cradle for star formation. Mm. Stage three, 150 light years away. Once a supernova happens much closer than 300 light years, we're approaching the zone where it does real damage. Nice. Stars have extremely powerful magnetic fields. When they die, the tsunami of dead star actually retains a lot of this magnetic energy woven through the shock wave that expands outwards. In this highly magnetized cloud, we get conditions like in a huge particle accelerator that's accelerating charged particles like protons, nuclei, and electrons to immense speeds, which means we have an expanding cloud that is shooting deadly radiation in all directions long after the bright light from the initial explosion has faded away. If a supernova happens too close by, waves of these cosmic rays will wash over the solar system for thousands of years. While we're mostly protected on Earth's surface by the atmosphere and ozone layer, the influx up, of extra boy. radiation will still increase cancer and mutation rates. Sheesh. Not enough to cause a mass extinction, but it will be noticeable. Bro, it's still something, bro. You feel me? That too, it's like when people say, oh, like something will happen, but it's nothing too bad or, or you know what I'm saying? It's not too noticeable. It's just the fact that it's happening.
You feel me? That it's happening. That something's going on. That something is bound to happen. You feel me? Space flight would become impossible in the solar system as astronauts wouldn't survive the waves of radiation for long. There you go. We don't know exactly how bad what this would fuck? be, but a supernova that is close enough may trap our species on Earth for generations, maybe thousands of years. It only gets worse from here. Stage four, closer than 100 light years. Within 100 light years, things get bad as a supernova disrupts our climate in ways that we don't fully understand yet. There are a few unpleasant things happening all one after another. First, the high energy photons arrive from the explosion, followed by many decades of radiation from the radioactive tsunami, both of which seriously damage the ozone layer, Earth's shield against harmful radiation. The ozone layer absorbs ultraviolet radiation by breaking apart ozone, O3, into O2 and a free oxygen atom, which later reforms back into another ozone molecule. But the supernova radiation okay. breaks up nitrogen molecules that gobble up the free oxygen, breaking the cycle and depleting the ozone layer quickly. Damn. Without a radiation shield, everybody living on the surface is exposed to very high levels of UV radiation from our sun. Cancer rates would skyrocket, and just going outside during the day could be life-threatening. That's tough, bro. And that too is like, I've heard of people, I don't know the name of the condition, but I've heard of people like pretty much... They can't step outside in the sun, bro, because they'll get burnt real easily. You feel me? I forget the name of the condition, the skin condition. They get burnt real easy. They start peeling like a shit ton. They get dried up. You know what I'm saying? Like, and that that's now. You feel me? That's now. Imagine this shit happening, bro. Cancer rates would skyrocket, and just going outside during the day could be life-threatening. The extra radiation would also kill a lot, if not most, of the plankton in the oceans that live near the surface and are the basis for the marine food chains, leading to a mass extinction. Damn. Worse still, supernova hey, yo, magic is for the marine food chains, leading to a magic mass card. extinction. Look at that. Ooh, that uh, y'all y'all try sneaking that little, little Pokemon, you're not saying. Worse still, supernova radiation would ionize gas in the atmosphere, which means that it would punch through molecules and knock electrons off nuclei, leaving them charged. Yep. These charged nuclei then act as seeds for water vapor to gather and form massive global clouds. In the worst case, they would reflect enough sunlight to trigger an ice age. Yo. In fact, it's thought that the ice what? age two and a half million years ago was caused by a supernova. Some scientists even think that a supernova about Texas. 60 light years away might have been the cause of the Devonian mass extinction 350 million years ago. Bro, is it me or like these visuals are, 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 are kind of brutal? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, at first it was uh the, 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 this shit over here. Where is it? I think, I, yeah, I went too far. First it was uh the little mascot slash character. Of, yeah, right here. See? This little character right here in space, in a spacesuit. Just done. You feel me? And then you got this shit. But wait, there's more. The electrons punched free by the radiation form enormous electric avalanches, or in other words, lightning. Yep. Earth is hit by some of the worst thunderstorms in millions of years. The intense lightning causes global wildfires that consume forests and crops, devastate cities, disrupt our electrical grids and global supply chains all while a decimated ozone layer leaks deadly radiation. While in the past the ecosystem may have bounced back from a nearby supernova after a few thousand or million years, there's no guarantee modern civilization can take a hit of this magnitude. We would face food shortages, skyrocketing prices and wars as nations struggle to... Sounds familiar, I ain't gonna lie. Sounds familiar not be consumed by chaos and that's now so a supernova this close would at the very least do significant damage for hundreds or thousands of years if not end our modern civilization and with it millions or even billions of lives still humanity would likely survive and could recover could stage recover. five closer than 25 light years what? A supernova closer than 25 light years means that we're in its kill radius where a mass extinction is all but guaranteed Probably Garen about half of the ozone layer would be destroyed, scary. and massive climactic disruption on a scale we've never witnessed would ravage Earth. That's scary. Entire ecosystems would swiftly be wiped out by radiation as global wildfires envelop the planet. All the things described before happen, but way more intensely and much faster. 
A few people might survive for years in bunkers if they have food supplies, but the world they return to will be devastated and hostile to life for hundreds. Bro, that's fucking scary, bro. Like, look, look at this shit. You're in your bunker. Bunker, yo. Eating and shit. Can't go outside because it's like this and you breathe and you die. That's so fucking scary, bro. To think about but the world they return to will be devastated and hostile to life for hundreds of thousands of years human extinction is extremely likely wow the final stage four light years being any closer to a supernova is very unlikely because space is big but the effects would be extreme even from four light years away the distance to alpha centauri a supernova would be almost as bright as the sun in the sky while casting two shadows could be fun for a few hours, within days the Earth's surface gets as hot as a sauna, baking the surface for weeks until the explosion fades. The surface of Earth burns, scoured of life. Even the oceans aren't safe. The massive amount of radiation that follows burns away the ozone layer, killing everything that sees sunlight. It would be the largest extinction event in history, reducing life to a few survivors in the deep sea and critters in the deep soil. Life basically has to start over. Conclusion. How, how does that do happen? To be? There's no life to begin so, with. So, should you worry? No. Fortunately, there are only a handful of stars that may explode within 1,000 light years of Earth, and none are close enough to be a serious threat. Even better, these stars will probably not go supernova for many millions of years. I love how he just gives the reassurance. Do you, do you guys need to worry? Nah, you good. You know what I'm saying? Bro, I that shit. So you are safe. <laughs> Just bad. But there's no guarantee for the far future. As stars orbit the galaxy, our descendants may find themselves dangerously close to a supernova. But by then, a far more advanced and wiser humanity will hopefully be able to just move out of the way. Um, In any case, you can sleep well tonight That's under the beautiful wild. night sky. That's wild. And if you dream about understanding the physics behind this video and others, we've created a series of lessons. Promotion, you know what I'm saying? Ah, oh, wow, bro. Like, that's, it's, it's fucking scary, bro. I love how he did this, though. You know what I'm saying? I was dead asking a question. Does he usually do this? Because I forget. But, yeah, th this is some scary shit, man. I ain't gonna lie. One of the best things about this YouTube channel is that it gives science-backed information which isn't normally accessible, breaks it down to a level where almost anyone can understand, constantly updates us with new research, and gives us the public for free. Thank you for what you do. Let me see. Incredible user captivity behind these videos is not only Kurtz Kazaa's information and way of communicating it, but I've grown to love the music in the videos. Killer animating. It's better than, it's getting po better in a positive feedback loop kind of way exponentially over time oh man bro this shit crazy man this is it's really scary out here bro i ain't gonna lie but we don't gotta worry you're not saying that's my reaction if you enjoyed give this video a like subscribe if you haven't and i'm out